A cradle of Russian civilization, built on the remnants of a republic and surrounded by legends. That's what Novgorod has in store for you. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Novgorod, not to be confused with Nizhny Novgorod, is an oblast, that is, a federal subject of Russia that has its own government and parliament. While it's not the biggest of Russian regions, it holds an important spot in Russian history. It holds some of the oldest Russian settlements and thousands of cultural heritage sites, so for all intents and purposes, it's one of, if not the, historic center of Russian culture. A large number of medieval monuments, even from the pre-Mongol era, still survive to this day. Many things we associate with Russia, like icon paintings or the typical onion domes of churches, either originated or were greatly influenced by Novgorod. So without a doubt, this place is important for Russia. Which is why it's only fitting that we also take a good look at Novgorod and see what it's all about. Back in ancient times, the lands of Novgorod were used by Varangians, also known as Vikings, to travel down south to trade with the Byzantines. Early on, in 862 AD, Novgorod is indicated in chronicles of the time as the site where Rurik, chieftain of the Rus people, settled and founded his dynasty. The Rus people were initially Norsemen, but then were gradually assimilated into Slavic culture, thus giving birth to the Russian, Belarusian and Ukrainian nations. Rurik's successor, Oleg, was the one that moved the capital from Novgorod to Kiev, thus creating the famous Kingdom of Kievan Rus. Later on, Novgorod expelled their prince and became a republic, in which decisions were taken by a public assembly and the princes were elected rather than inheriting the throne. Since Novgorod connected trade routes between the Baltics, Byzantium and Central Asia, it quickly became a prosperous trading center. Incredibly, Novgorod wasn't affected by the Mongol invasions of the 13th century, but later on in the 1400s, it became a part of the Grand Duchy of Moscow. This was actually the worst thing that could happen to them, because in 1560, when Ivan the Terrible was in charge, he feared that the Novgorodian church leaders would betray him. So he sent his men to practically sack the city and massacre the population. Casualties were in the tens of thousands and the number of acts of extreme violence were innumerable. After this attack, Novgorod never fully recovered and lost its status as one of Russia's leading cities. Hundreds of years later, that same city, now called Veliki Novgorod, is still the capital of the oblast. It's one of the oldest Russian cities, having been around since the 9th century AD. Before Ivan did a number on them, Novgorod used to be one of the largest and most prosperous cities in Europe. If you're curious about those times, you're in luck. The medieval buildings in and around the city have been declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO, so you know you've got plenty to see. Chief among them would be the Holy Sophia Cathedral, built almost 1000 years ago. Nowadays, Veliki Novgorod is still a powerful cultural center, a strong call for all things Russian. It may no longer be the urban powerhouse it used to be, but it's still a sight to behold. One of the main reasons Novgorod is such an important place is because it managed to become a republic in a time when feudalism was the norm. In 1136, Prince Vsevolod Mustistavich was expulsed from Novgorod and a new republican state emerged. In it, the ruler was appointed by boyars, who were the powerful landlords in Eastern Europe. There was also a public assembly called Vece, the highest legislature and judicial authority, but we'll talk about that in a minute. This republic was quite successful, repelled several invasions, were never captured by the Mongol hordes and thus became a powerful trade and cultural center. The ultimate downfall of the Novgorod Republic came as a result of its inability to feed its growing population. So, it became dependent on grain imports from surrounding states, mainly Vladimir Suzdal, a dependence that was used to gradually gain control over the Republic. Eventually, Ivan III forcibly annexed Novgorod into the Grand Duchy of Moscow in 1478, thus ending the Republic for good. No historic Russian city is complete without the Kremlin. Veliki Novgorod is no different. 
The Novgorod Detinets is the city's old medieval fortress, dating from 1484, although previous iterations of the Kremlin have been built as early as 1044. Obviously, it too is part of Novgorod's UNESCO heritage site. Most of the original defense towers are still standing, and inside you can still find the original courtyards, churches and other buildings. The Novgorod Detinets looks exactly how you would expect, and it's an absolutely cool place to visit. Novgorod's history pretty much starts from here, so this is absolutely a top tourist destination of the Oblast. One of the characteristics of Novgorod that sets it apart from other medieval states was its Veche. This popular assembly gained great prominence and dealt with matters of war and peace, adopted laws and called for, or expelled, rulers. Veche, by the way, means council and is synonymous with the word Soviet. Traditionally, the Novgorod Veche could have been summoned by anyone who ran the Veche bell, although the actual procedure was usually a bit more complex. When the assembly gathered, the whole population of the city met in front of the cathedral and the discussions could then proceed. Novgorodians were proud of this system and it, along with the iconic bell, were a symbol of republican sovereignty. Which is why when Ivan III annexed Novgorod into the Duchy of Moscow, he disbanded it to put an end to the old ways of the citizens. Did you know that Novgorod sits at the center of a legend? The Legend of Slovene and Rus is a 17th century chronicle containing legends about the settlement of Novgorod by the Slovenes, Rurik and the ancestors of Russians. According to the stories, 3099 years after the creation of the world, or 2409 BC, the Slovene and Rus tribes, descendants of the Scythians, began leaving their lands from the shores of the Black Sea in search of a new home. After 14 years, they came to Lake Moisko, where the Slovenes, not to be confused with the modern nation of Slovenia, established the city of Slovensk, present-day Veliki Novgorod, while the Rusa created the city of Staraya Rusa, also in Novgorod. The legends also contain stories about relatives of the Slavs, military campaigns against Egypt, Greece and Bulgarians, their encounter with Alexander the Great, the Apostle Andrew and the Vikings. While it's a phenomenal story, greatly widespread in Russia in the 17th and 18th centuries, it is a work of fiction. It is nonetheless one of the most influential pieces of Russian literature, and even today it's well worth a read.